She-Hulk, Black Panther, Blade the Vampire Hunter. You're about to see each and every one of these so-called Avengers get humbled when they mess with the one and only wall crawler of New York, Spider-Man. And it all starts in the middle of New York's streets. As the Avengers and Spider-Man have a falling out, guys, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're being mind-controlled, all right? This little doohickey in my hand, it's called a resequencer. It reshuffles your thoughts without you even realizing it. You're being used. Played. To that end, Spider-Man tells his allies that a supervillain calling himself the Grand Manipulator is behind all these mind-wiping shenanigans. And Peter being Peter, you can bet that he's made sure that he's made plans to help his fellow superheroes get out of this mind funk. I have a buddy at university just waiting to deactivate this and free your minds, and then we can all be friends again. Wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't that be cool? But here's the thing. The Avengers, from Captain America to Thor, have all taken a hard swig of cool aid that, as Spidey predicted, they don't even know that they're being mind-controlled by this so-called Grand Manipulator. That sounds like a great idea, Spider-Man. We're all in favor of resolving this without anyone getting hurt, except it's not us who are being mind-controlled. It's you. And Spidey says what we've all been thinking up to this point, when Cap starts pointing his star-spangled fingers Pete's way. Yeah, it's just, isn't that something a mind-controlled person would say? But hey guys, there's no convincing these Avengers. The Grand Manipulator had already penetrated their minds so hard that not even Tony Stark could spell information bias at this point. Even worse, Marvel's mind-controlled premier superhero team is starting to feel froggy. Spider-Man. Please give me the contraption. If your friend deactivates it improperly, it will scramble the minds of every person in New York City, including yours. Well, Peter Parker is one smart dude, so he knows he has no choice but to inevitably put hands on his fellow superheroes. We're not going to get through this without a fight, are we? Please. I don't want to fight the Avengers. I'll probably lose. You probably will. Yeah. Thor, keep peacocking like that. See what happens. Because right then and there, Spider-Man knows it's time to boogie, so he thwips up a web and starts swinging. Man, this sucks. And like a total boomer, Cap calls someone else, Iron Man, to do his job instead of getting off his ass and doing it himself. Little does Earth's mightiest heroes know that the wall crawler isn't just planning on running away from them. Peter's just getting ready to humble their mind-controlled asses. First, Iron Man tries to swoop in and accost the web slinger mid-swing. But if you didn't know by now, when Spider-Man starts cooking, y'all know it's going to be well done. So, in a matter of seconds, Peter frees himself from the armor-clad Avenger's grip and hits him with a miniaturized shock, explosive that makes Tony's suit malfunction. On the ground, we see that Black Panther is the only Marvel superhero in this story that has the good sense not to F with the web slinger. Spider-Man is a highly intelligent individual, and he's had 12 hours to come up with a few ways to defeat us. In the meantime, Spidey runs along the streets of NYC when the Jade Giantess, She-Hulk, attempts to bull rush and hit him with a cracking right straight. But, if nothing else, you better recognize that Spider-Man has got peak reflexes, so he goes all P-A-R-K-O-U-R -R and easily vaults over the Green-Skinned Bombshell Carol Danvers, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, tries to pick up the slack and grab Spider-Man by the neck when he attempts to swing away from the Emerald Empress. Gook, Spidey, I'm gonna need you to give me the resequencer. And at this point, we fans get to witness just how savage Spider-Man is, as he doesn't even pull a single punch to take down this hot, blonde intergalactic hero. Instead, Spidey just pulls out a red and blue pill from his suit and flicks it into Carol Danvers' open mouth. I'm really sorry about this, Carol. Sorry about. Well, there's your answer, people. Spider-Man just up and did a whole wham-bam. Thank you, M-A-A-M, on Captain Marvel with a hot, sticky dose of webbing that nearly chokes her. But to Spider-Man's credit, he does apologize for suddenly bailing on her. Try not to panic. That webbing will dissolve in less than 60 seconds. I promise. Now, at this point, we get to see Ted Grand Manipulator talk about how Spider-Man is way more dangerous in enclosed spaces than he is in the outdoors. And, apparently, 
Steve Rogers missed this memo, because what does the star-spangled Avenger do? Why, throw his shield at Spidey, of course, which the wall crawler easily catches, effectively making it so that Cap just gave their enemy a brand spanking new tool he can use to bust more Avenger ass along the way. Oh, and one more thing. Cap throwing his shield at Spidey didn't just give Pete a new weapon. It forced him to take cover indoors, which, as Cap established just a few seconds ago, is where Spider-Man becomes extremely more dangerous. So, yeah, Captain America? He's not very smart. But hey, nice utility belt, though. We hope that it has some ibuprofen in it, because Spider-Man is about to commit a felony on your geriatric butt soon enough. In the meantime, Spider-Man finds himself inside an empty office to find Blade waiting for him there. Blade. Spider-Man. I have to get past you. You know that, right? I know you gotta try. Ooh. We're about to see these two throw down. And believe us when we say it's going to be a match for the ages. So. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on all notifications to be the first to see the conclusion of this story and witness how Spider-Man humbles. The rest of the Avengers, we'll see you soon, only here at KRTV Marvel.